The new robot guides at a Tokyo museum look so eerily human and speak so smoothly that they almost outdo people. Almost. Japanese robotics expert Hiroshi Ishiguru, an Osaka University professor, says they will be useful for research on how people interact with bots and what differentiates the person from the machine. Welcome to another episode of AI and Robots. Today we'll be looking through the newly released charming female humanoid robots. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. Although the day when every household has its own robot is some way off, the Japanese are demonstrating a formidable acceptance of humanoids. Erika enjoys the theater and animated films, would like to visit Southeast Asia, and believes her ideal partner is a man with whom she can chat easily. She is less forthcoming, however, when asked her age. That's a slightly rude question. I'd rather not say, comes the answer as her embarrassed questioner shifts sideways and struggles to put the conversation on a friendlier footing erica turns her head her eyes following his every move it is all rather disconcerting but if japan's new generation of intelligent robots is ever going to rival humans as conversation partners perhaps that is as it should be Erica, who it turns out is 23, is the most advanced humanoid to have come out of a collaborative effort between Osaka and Kyoto Universities and the Advanced Telecommunications Research Institute International. At its heart is the group's leader, Hiroshi Ishiguru, a professor at Osaka University's Intelligent Robots Laboratory, perhaps best known for creating a Geminoid HI-1, an android in his likeness, right down to his trademark black leather jacket and a Beatles mop top made with his own hair. Erika, however, looks and sounds far more realistic than Ishiguru's silicone doppelganger, or his previous human-like robot, Geminoid F. Though she is unable to walk independently, she possesses improved speech and an ability to understand and respond to questions. Her every utterance accompanied by uncannily human-like changes in her facial expression. Erika, Ishiguru insists, is the most beautiful and intelligent android in the world. The principle of beauty is captured in the average face, so I used images of 30 beautiful women, mixed up their features, and used the average for each to design the nose, eyes, and so on, he says, pacing up and down his office at ATR's robotics laboratory. She is a more advanced version of Geminoid F, another Ishiguru creation that this year appeared in Sayonara, director Koji Fukada's cinematic adaptation of a stage production of the same name. The movie, set in rural Japan in the aftermath of a nuclear disaster, made Geminoid F the world's first humanoid film actor, co-starring alongside Briar Lee Long. While robots and films are almost as old as cinema itself, Erika did not rely on human actors. Think C-3PO or the motion capture technology behind, for example, Sunny from I, Robot. The Japanese have demonstrated a formidable acceptance of robots in their everyday lives over the past year. In April, two branches of Mitsubishi UFJ Financial Group started employing androids to deal with customer inquiries. Pepper, a humanoid home robot, went on sale to individual consumers in June, with each shipment selling out in under a minute. This year also saw the return to Earth of Korobo, a companion robot, from a stay on the International Space Station, during which it became the first robot to hold a conversation with a human in space. And this summer, a hotel staffed almost entirely by robots, including the receptionists, concierges, and cloakroom staff, opened in a theme park near Nagasaki, albeit with human colleagues on hand to deal with any teething problems. But increasing daily interaction with robots has also thrown up ethical questions that have yet to be satisfactorily answered. SoftBank, the company behind Pepper, saw fit to include a clause in its user agreement stating that owners must not perform sexual acts or engage in other indecent behavior with the android. 
Ishiguru believes warnings of a dystopian future in which robots are exploited or themselves become the abusers are premature. I don't think there's an ethical problem, he says. First, we have to accept that robots are part of our society and then develop a market for them. If we don't manage to do that, then there will be no point in having a conversation about ethics. Nomura Research Institute offered a glimpse into the future with a recent report in which it predicted that nearly half of all jobs in Japan could be performed by robots by 2035. I think Nomura is onto something, says Ishiguru. The Japanese population is expected to fall dramatically over the coming decades, yet people will still expect to enjoy the same standard of living. That, he believes, is where robots can step in. In Erika, he senses an opportunity to challenge the common perception of robots as irrevocably alien. As a two-week experiment with Android shop assistants at an Osaka department store suggested, people may soon come to trust them more than they do human beings. Robots are a mirror for better understanding ourselves, he says. We see human-like qualities in robots and start to think about the true nature of the human heart about desire, consciousness, and intention. Coming face to face with Erica can be disconcerting. Her ability to express a range of emotions via dozens of pneumatic actuators embedded beneath her silicone skin left this human momentarily lost for words when invited by Ishiguru to strike up a conversation in her native Japanese. For the time being, a flawless chat with Erica must resolve around a certain number of subjects, yet experts believe that free-flowing verbal exchanges could be only a few years away. For that to happen, developers will have to imbue robots with a more human-like presence, what the Japanese call Sanzai Khan, rather than settle for the human, but not quite, qualities that can put people on edge in the presence of a moving, talking android. By Ishiguru's reckoning, the more they resemble humans, from their physical appearance to their capacity for natural conversation, easier it will be for us to overcome our phobias, exploited to dramatic effect by countless sci-fi movies. They will have to be able to guess a human's intentions and desires, then refer to an internal system in order to partly or wholly match those intentions and desires in their response, he says. He pauses, before asking how that could alter the dynamics of the robot-human relationship. It is a rhetorical question. It means, he says, that one day, humans and robots will be able to love each other. That's all for today. What are your thoughts on the video? You can leave them all in the comments section below. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to the channel. You can click on the notification so you can get updates on new content from us. Until next time, have a great day.